Oh, oh nice of you to join us. <laughs> it's Russ. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler, episode number 213. Today's topic is WordPress Customizer. Let's learn about the WordPress Customizer, shall we? Let's go around the room real quick and get everyone introduced. George, tell us all about yourself. Hi, I'm George Mathias. I work on Jetpack by Day and just spent the last three weeks of my life uh, merging our custom CSS implementation uh, with the core custom CSS implementation that lives in the customizer. Dun, da, da. Awesome. How about you, Jason? Uh -huh. Oh, no. You're back. Go for it, Jason. We missed all of that. Go again. Oh, wow. OK. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Jason Cosper. I work at WP Engine. And uh, that's it. Nice. Jonathan, take a drink. How about you? <laughs> I am uh, Jonathan Wold. I, I work at XWP. I've been working with WordPress and watching it grow for the past 12 years or so. I'm excited to talk about the customizer. Sweet. Russ, how about you? Uh, I'm Russ. I do all things WordPress in Las Vegas. Uh, I work at Web Dev Studios, and I am not the biggest fan of the customizer. Sweet. Awesome. We have a naysayer. Sarah, how about you? Hi, I'm Sarah Weefald. I'm the project manager at Zeek Interactive, and I like it when people know how to use the customizer and, and help themselves with things. Nice. Weston, how about you? Yeah, I'm Weston Reuter. Uh, I live in Portland, Oregon. Uh, tech, I'm a technology director at XWP, customizer component maintainer, and uh, core committer for WordPress. Sweet. Good to have you. How about you, Steve? I am Steve Zengit. I'm the founder of Zeek Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress meetup. And tonight will be our last general meetup of the year. We've changed venues. We're meeting at Crash Labs uh, because the power is out at the Zeek offices. Nice. That's why Sarah and I are both home. <laughs> Sweet. Did you try the customizer in Zeek offices? <laughs> that's, actually what, that's actually what threw the power out. And yeah, you tried we, turning it off and then yeah, on again. We tried, yeah, we tried turning the whole building off and on again. Awesome. Hey, I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at Jason Tucker on Twitter. And my website is jasontucker.blog. Oh, .blog. Nice. nice. Sweet. Check you out. I know, I, right? I have russellaron.blog. Wait, so. is, is, <laughs> is Bob Loblaw's law.blog taken? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Loblaw's law dot blog. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's taken, but Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan dot blog is not taken. Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> oh boy. Sounds like somebody had twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so George, since you've been playing around with the customizer a lot, how about you uh you give us a little bit of an understanding of the customizer? Sure. So uh just from mm, Comparatively layman's perspective compared to um, a couple of the folks on right now. Um, Customizer is something that was introduced to WordPress around, what, 3.5 originally? 3.4. Yeah. Before. Uh, so about the past four years as a way of, on the admin side, having some a little bit of a what you see is what you get interface, not only for posts, which our post editor does, to some extent, but uh, to just let you preview your changes so you can uh, change your um, uh, blog title, change your description all at once, and then push them all live. So you basically stage your changes, get everything ready, and then all at once, everything goes live instead mm -hmm. of having to like update the options here, hit save, and then half of it's changed on the front end while you're doing other stuff. and this way of just staging things. Mm -hmm. Experimenting. Yeah. Experimenting. Yeah, and, and what you do in the customizer stays in the customizer, just like Vegas, until you hit save and publish. That's yeah. actually not a real thing, but you know, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because what happens in Vegas ends up on Instagram. Right. <laughs> yeah, and so the in 3.4. There are only some a few options that are available, like the site title and tagline, header text color, background color, header image, background image, menu locations, and the, the static front page options. So pretty much things that you would only set up once, maybe, when you first set mm -hmm. your site. But then in 3.9, we added widgets. In, in 4.3, we added menu management. 
and then uh, have improved uh, additional aspects of the customizer in terms of performance and in the uh, API for developers to extend. It's interesting too that themes have taken various, uh, done a lot of different types of implementations on top of it too, right? So it's a fairly inconsistent experience, at least from what I've observed from how one theme chooses to implement to another. So I've noticed that people's perception of what's possible um, is often colored by how they've used it thus far. And it's well, either a positive or negative experience. Well, I mean, just looking from the performance standpoint, when it first came out, you used to update something and it, it took a minute to load. Um, and it was just that change. But now in the customizer, you can actually see when you make your change, you can see what it's going to look like on your responsive site because it shows you desktop, tablet, and mobile. I mean, that's a huge improvement, you know, when you're trying to determine if something should be an H1 or an H2 or, mm -hmm. you know, the right class. Like, that's a huge improvement. Yeah, that was Rusty, in... I thought you hated the customizer. So, so <laughs> I, I don't want to make it a big thing, but what I don't like about the customizer is like it is having to go and change and move between different pages and things like that. Like I, I kind of like the options panel in the sense of change it here and it would change globally everywhere. But what I do like about the theme customizer is now that we're all kind of moving towards that way, whenever I need to go change something, that's the first place I look instead of trying to find the themes option panel and is it in Genesis or is it in a custom post type or is it its own menu? Now it's all just in one place called customizer. And that's what I do like. Well, and, and I that, think too, like when, it, when it comes to the customizer, I mean, we're all developers or most of us are developers talking about the customizer. And so the purpose of that panel isn't necessarily for us. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, it, 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 I, I think well it custom just, CSS is for us. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's I think it was a I think it's a great tool, but it's another place I have to go to look to see if somebody made a change there when everything was, used to just be in one options panel. But like, to piggyback on what Russ was saying, it, it's really nice to have that sort of being standardized, right? It, it, in the past, if you installed a Woo theme or an Elegant theme or an Organic theme, they all had different yeah. ways of managing your theme, right? So you 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 had to re if if you were uh, you know, just a general user, and you and you were uh, updating a theme. You had to sort of relearn how that theme worked uh, as you moved from theme to theme. Hmm. And so yeah, hopefully, really. we're we're moving toward a standard. When really, yeah. there was you always needed to be able to check in multiple places to see if a user changed something because there's always been settings general, settings reading. There's always been uh, appearance widgets, appearance menus, and then theme options panel above all of that. Um, so there's always been a half dozen places you need to go to check something. The customizer, which may consolidate a lot of those, I think is more a boon than, oh, there's one more place I might need to check. Yeah, um, but so what it used to be is like, um, especially with Genesis when you're using, so I use the, um, oh, what's it called, the Altitude Pro, and actually there there's different places between the customizer and the widgets that sometimes it doesn't show up properly, and that's probably poorly coding on the Genesis side, but like that's my, my standard of it's another place I have to go to check to yeah. see how come the change is affected here, but it's not being affected here? And it's another place I have to go to debug, which I think it's gotten better over time, but I think we're all improving it down the road. Now, now, Genesis developers, please uh, send all feedback to Russell Aaron. Um, <laughs> at at WPEngine.com. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's been interesting for me is observing the differences in end user reactions um, over developer reactions, um, which, uh, for, from my perspective, have tended towards, at least in, in, in written form online, have tended towards negative. Um, and whereas I've observed um, in client situations and just working, looking over the shoulders of end users and asking questions, that um, I've, I've tend to find a lot of really positive feedback from people who are using it. Or, or when we're developing new functionality in the, fun in the customizer and a customer already has experience with it, like, oh, wow, now I can do this in there. They're, they're, I've tended to see much more positive feedback coming from people who are actually using it, uh, who don't have developer context. And so that's an interesting thing for us to balance, right? But I think that's a, a positive sign more than a negative one. Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and in general, you know, there are other platforms that are coming out that are much easier to use yes. for the end user who has no developer context. Um, and I, I think that if WordPress is going to continue to remain relevant, we need to really step up in that department. Yeah. 
Well, I, I think uh, to Steve's point, like when we used a woo theme or when we used an elegant theme, in the in the option, I could have like a, a, a WYSIWYG editor and I can make something in H1 or I could do that in the customizer. Now I have to go in and I have to learn how to write H1 tags and how to add a class and stuff. And I think that's really what threw me mm. um, when the customizer first came out was that it's not really easy to integrate the, the WYSIWYG editor. Now, you probably shouldn't be using that. I'll grant you that. But for people that are used to doing it this way, when you show them the customizer and half their options are gone, what do they do? Just like John, just like Jonathan would say, I I observe people when they use their site, and I'm watching what they're clicking on and what they're doing to try to help them. Um, but when they show me what they used to do, you can see those two yeah. differences. Yeah, one and of what, the one of the complaints with or one of the problems with the customizer is. A lack of full coverage of what a user can do in the admin. So they get to on a certain path of, of wanting to build their site and then they hit a dead end where they can't complete a certain task that they wanted to do. 4.7, we're adding the ability to create page stubs and post stubs in the customizer so you don't have to like go to the admin, add a page, then go back to the customizer, add it to a menu. <laughs> that is no longer, the, you don't have to do that. And uh, in the customized posts feature plugin, that is extended further by then allowing you to modify titles, content. It actually adds a tiny MC editor into the customizer in the in the bottom half of the screen. So we're trying to add more of those features that you would normally do in the admin, but add to the customizer in a way that can be live previewed, so the changes can be staged together, so that you can actually share that previewed state with other users to iterate on and, and do editorial review, and then and then put all those changes live at once or schedule them to go live at a later time. Especially with uh, the new customizer change sets, I think it is, where there's mm -hmm. a, a UUID, GUID, some sort of uh, alphanumeric string hash that refers to the current uh, ch set of compiled change sets. Uh, you can actually then do some versioning with it and yep. then share it with another admin who can look at it and say, oh, this this is what you're trying to do. OK, cool. Uh, yes, these meet my approval. Go ahead and actually push those live. Yeah, you can just take the URL that you're currently on, copy it, send it to another admin. They can load up the customizer state as you were looking at it with all the settings that you've supplied. And then they can make additional changes. And then there's no like concurrency locking yet, but there is a track ticket for that to help facilitate concurrent users who are editing the same customizer session. Th that's so you're saying that you're saying that customizer is becoming code pen, <laughs> <laughs> and that you can kind of build these things out and then save it and then make it so that you can send them to other people. Mm -hmm. You're saying even at some point here you'll be able to even schedule these things, or yep. somebody will come up with a plugin yep. that will allow you to schedule out those changes. The customized uh, snapshots plugin actually adds that scheduling capability. Wow, that's crazy. You know, one of the things that we've talked about a lot on on Water Cooler is uh, separating um, the user that you know the the site owner from being able to actually like destroy their site. How, how are we how are we looking at this with when it comes to um, having the customizer and having it available so the user can totally make changes to the site and then also be able to protect them from actually breaking their site themselves. What's, I don't know. What's I, think the, I think the ability to preview the effect of what you're going to do as you're setting it up, but before pushing it live, is a pretty good safeguard against mm -hmm. internet in t unintentionally breaking your site. Because if it's going to be broken, you can see right there beside your changes that it's going to be broken. You can just always hit cancel, back out. Whoa, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, and yeah. change sets also. Every single change you make, every time you hit save and publish, a new change set is started, and so. They so much in. like revisions. Yeah, so every single snapshot, every single change you make is stored in a separate uh, change set entry. So you could uh, plug in, and maybe Core eventually can add revision history for changes in the customizer and the ability, ability to revert a specific change at a point in time. So this all brings up a pain point that I've observed. Is that one of the, the big pain points with the customizer is is, is uh, let's put it in like a marketing category. A lot of people don't know what it's capable of. Um, a great example is what what it's cap what what you could build on top of it. Like a lot of people aren't aware. Uh, we're talking about things that'll be in core, but a lot of what we do for clients, we're building very heavily on top of it and doing custom workflows and much more complex types of things that work really well. 
that you know, from our perspective, we said, okay, what can we do to do a better job of letting people know what's possible, like what's actually out there in the wild being used? I mean, uh, the best example I've ever seen of uh, someone really getting folks thinking about what can be done in the customizer was a talk that Patrick Rowland did at LoopConf uh, probably a year and a half ago, uh, talking about how in WooCommerce they had like a version of the customizer to let users um, pick like what colors and how they mm -hmm. wanted to format their marketing emails that were getting sent out by WooCommerce. Nice. Um, great talk, and it really was a opened my mind to a bunch of uh, alternate uses of the customizer apart from just customizing the front-end display of your site. Wait, they were putting the, the WooCommerce email formats in the customizer? I believe from what I had seen of it. Yeah, I that? remember uh, I doing a free Tavern post about that. I remember reading that. There's hmm. At this next LoopConf as well, there's going to be a extended workshop specifically on the customizer. So I'm going to be... Uh, contributing to that, we can dive into a lot of those topics. One one of the things that's interesting too, where we've seen is is taking a very fairly granular approach to workflows in the customizer, where you can you know open up certain flexibility, certain functionality for a specific uh, role, and limit it for others. I mean, there's there's a lot that you can do, and. Um, it, yeah, Wes, and you, you're better to speak to this, but from my perspective, a lot of the internals, a lot of the work that's been done over the past two years in particular has been, um, as I've seen it, with sort of developer friendliness in mind in terms of extensibility and building additional and more complex workflows. So it becomes more of a thing of just letting people know what's possible and giving, you guys are saying, better examples. Well, I think a lot of it is is educating the person who's going to be using it. Yep. You know, like... Um, a lot of people when I first talked to, they thought the customizer was replacing the edit.php screen. Mm. So you no longer go and edit a, edit a post or edit a page that way instead of, okay, here's how you change the header, here's how you change the favicon. But I think now as the customizer is getting more open, we could potentially see that to where you can go into a page and edit uh, an ACF field from the customizer and no longer have to go into edit PHP or something, I think even that's possible down the down the line. And it's that possible right now with customized posts. You can manage post meta and posts in the customizer. I think from my perspective, looking at end users, part of the key here is I would love to see a an experience in the customizer where people are like, I love this. This is fantastic. And let it be driven by end users who are saying, I want to see more of this. That, that's kind of how I've been looking at it from a um, you know, what what types of experiences can we create in the customizer where people look at it and say this is fantastic? Um, I want more of this because then you know you're you're on the mark, right? Otherwise, we don't want to be in a world where we're just creating stuff for the sake of it. You want to you want to see where it's actually made users' lives better. And with the work we've done with chain sets in the customizer, and the uh, I'm super excited to see some of the. I'm curious to see how the CSS thing takes off, but I'm excited to see it. When I watch end users. Just like wow, I can do this now, or the scheduling change sets, um, yeah, and just see kind of the lights go on with how it positively affects their workflow. Then I'm like, all right, we have a winner here. We're on track. I, do you guys? I, do, oh, sorry. Um, no, do you I guys, was gonna say, go go on, Jason. Oh, do you guys feel that at some point here that we're gonna we're gonna end up with like multiple ways to edit the same stuff that's all being provided by? you know, WordPress, the organization itself. Like we had Calypso that came out and everybody was like, Ooh, this is neat. We can do this new thing now. And now we're having customizer who, where you can at some point here, be able to edit posts within customizer. Um, you know, where, where, where does it start? Where does it end? And where do we, you know, what do we tell our customers to actually, you know, to make changes and, and use those things? Cause at some point here, you know, customizer is going to be ooh shiny and everyone's going to look in there and go, Wow, I can change this thing and this thing, and by the time they're done with it, they recustomize the entire website, and all they're trying to do is just, you know, write a blog post. I think that with the REST API being in core now, the ways that users make changes to their site is only going to grow. And so, I mean, we have the Quick Draft currently a widget, but um, I think that there's going to be a lot more front end editing opportunities and customizer and of course the admin and then apps. And I think users are going to just become more familiar with there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. And I think customizer foundation provides a great uh, 
experience in that all the changes can be staged, all the changes can be previewed. That isn't possible with other um, interfaces. Um, but even with the customizer, the framework, the customizer, customize.php app as it is today, I think will will be kind of, will fade away in favor of integrating customizer into the front end of, uh, of your site. So mm -hmm. when you click customize, you're not going to leave the page to go to customize.php, but rather the customize, customizer would be bootstrapped onto the front end. You'd be able to inline edit elements in the page. Controls would appear as needed. But I think there will be much less distinction between the, the, this third middle area between the back end and the front end. I think that's going to kind of fade away in favor of there, it being much more of a, a front end focused uh, extension. And, for and editing. Jason, Sorry, Weston, I didn't mean to interrupt. But Jason, having uh, having multiple ways to edit the same content, I think that's a good thing, right? You're talking about different use cases, different different types of users that are going to be uh, contributing content to the same site. Yeah, but unless you're talking about something like Visual Composer, where it handles things on its own end, and you're trying to do it in the customizer, and they're used to doing it this way, you're trying to tell them that way. That's where I see the problem is, you know, you have all these drag and drop editors that have become big, and then you have the customizer, so you're trying to get two things to work with each other which, you know that that kind of limits people's abilities to a sense it's interesting with visual composer in particular we've done several replacements of visual composer in the customizer because um, one of the big pain points Good. that you got yeah <laughs> and, uh, there's Anyway, that, sorry, that could be is that too, is that too opinionated. I'm sorry. <laughs> there, there's a that could be an entire conversation in and of itself. Um, I think uh, I think that was back on the episode. I don't know. Jason, Twelve, like, thirteen. Go ahead. Yeah, go so, ahead. You know, one of the big pain points is the lack of preview, right? Yeah. Like you're you're building these this stuff and you don't know the implications, the ramifications of it, and you're you're within a specific interface. And what we've done is we've broken them out of that and identified our, what actually matters most to you in this particular use case, move that into the customizer, use widgets there to drag and drop, build layouts, et cetera. Um, but yeah, we, we've seen that. And it's a great point. So we found it in some cases it can't coexist. You just have to figure out what works best for the end user in that particular scenario. Is there a way to hide the customizer? Say I'm using v uh, Visual Composer for some stupid reason, but it's being used, and uh, I don't want my client messing with that. Is there a way to to, to like un unregister that script or something? Or there there is a plugin in the .org repo that is like destroy the customizer or something, <laughs> something named like that. Yeah, but like, but if you're, I mean, if you're using a, a drag and drop interface that is not a pile, uh, such as Beaver Builder, which is beautiful, um, you know, you don't, you're in a completely different, like, you know, interface where you can preview everything. You don't see the customize. You don't really necessarily have to worry about your your client digging in there. Right. What I'm hoping too is with these builders that they will become uh, that they'll make begin making more and more use of the customizer internals. I think that would be a fantastic sort of path forward because I mean, I, I think there's always going to be room for more complex or custom sort of editing experiences and creation experiences. Um, I'd, I'd love to just see them use more and more of the internals. Um, so they have things like preview and they're not, they're not reinventing things uh, as they go. I think along. A lot of it is the increasing amount of JavaScript chops that folks in the WordPress community have yeah. both in the core development community, as well as like the folks that are making and shipping these third party plugins like Beaver Builder or uh, the yeah. one. Um, but I mean, cause when the customizer first came out, it was basically a, uh, Daryl Coopersmith went on a coding binge, and then for probably a couple of releases after the fact, nobody really understood exactly how it worked until everyone's just like, okay, we really need to understand this so we can start experimenting and digging in with it and expanding on it. Uh, and now we have a variety of folks who have at least a passable enough understanding that they can contribute to it um, and well enough documented and well enough. Um, De developed code in it that it's not like trying to learn it is like trying to learn an entire new thing. It's very well architected and using like underscore and backbone and so forth. Yeah, it's a modern JavaScript application, yeah. single page application. So if you want to learn JavaScript, build the build on the customizer. Yeah. 
I never know who George is talking to because he's always looking to his left or to his right. I feel oh, like, somebody else in the room. I feel like he's very artistic. I, but the I feel like camera he, is on the laptop. Yeah. You all are on the big screen. No, no, I get it, but that's I feel a, like I feel like I'm watching an interview with you, George. Like you're looking. <laughs> <on the side. laughs> it's artistic, Russ. Stop messing with it. Yeah, he's, got, he's the only one of us with art direction. I'm in profile. So, so at what point? Which one? At what point? Which one of these different ways of being able to do um, customizations, editing, that sort of thing? When do when do we get to that single page editing place? Because it sounds like you know, like we were talking about Beaver Builder earlier and Visual Composer and stuff. You end up with all these different ways of making mm -hmm. changes to it. Um, when we go back to talking about like the CSS editor that's built into a customizer as well, you also end up with yeah another place that you're going to be making these changes to. Okay. So. At some point here, you're almost saying like, "Hey, if anything's in this CSS editor in Customizer, that you're telling the in, you know the user, the site owner, hey, you're allowed to make changes in here, um, and then things that are happening outside of that, maybe you're not supposed to be making changes outside of these." So, like, how does that rule set work, and how how are people that are building sites for other folks being able to to manage that? Is there like being able to do roles or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so each each. Uh... Each uh, control or section or panel in the customizer has a uh, capability associated with it. So you can lock it down and restrict access based on the user's roles and capabilities. Or expand access. For example, with the uh, custom CSS, CSS in the customizer, by default, that's only limited by core to folks that have the unfiltered HTML capability. So mm -hmm. if you're a multi-site, you need to be a super admin in order to actually access it, just for security. But with Jetpack, we're adding additional sanitizing to it, so then we're expanding it to anyone with like the edit theme options capability. So single site admins, that are non like super admins, can go in and actually uh, nice. modify the CSS of the site. But so that that role editor only is uh, native to the customizer, right? Like if I was using like some kind of role uh, editor inside of WordPress, and I gave them access to the site settings and they're able to go change the the title and the tagline, but I don't let them do it in the customizer. Theoretically, they can still break it, right? So, the 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 roles in the customizer are only native to customizer. No, right? no, these are just general WordPress capabilities. Uh, so, like uh, the uh, in the customizer, it uses the capability edit CSS, um, which is a new one that's being introduced for WordPress four point seven, but could just as easily be used on the normal WP admin interface as it could on the um, uh, in the customizer. And so it's default, the same capabilities. Yeah. By default, the site title and tagline options have the uh, manage options capability associated with them. So if you want to lock it down, prevent users from managing those in the customizer, you could just assign a different capability to those. One thing that's going to be interesting, too, is looking at the themes that have bundled CSS editing within them. Because there's gonna there's gonna be a time. I mean, I think this is again where some of the developer education comes in too, right? And just how we how we do a better how can we do a better job of you know helping developers make the switches or figure out why they'd want to? Because you're otherwise you're gonna have inconsistent experiences. Someone's like, oh, at CSS, where do I go? Do I go to my theme settings? Do I go to the customizer to do this? Everybody should know. read George's uh, make core post on extending the custom CSS functionality. It takes a village. Half that post was is props to everyone else in the community. <laughs> uh, but that's a great point, though. How do we encourage um, more awareness of it? How many of the people developing for WordPress actually follow Make, uh, creating themes rather and plugins? Um, I mean, if you look at the support tickets, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I try to stay on top of everything on Make and, and on top of everything on Develop and just see what's going on. So, nice. w w well, I mean, like my plugins itself, I didn't know I was not uninstalling stuff I needed to uninstall when my plugin got deactivated. So I head over to Make and I go read there, and now I'm learning how to do things properly. I, I try to read that as much as possible. And I think with the customizer, I think the more detailed we can be and say, hey, this is probably a better option when you're trying to edit CSS or when you're trying to give your client, you know, limited functionality, you should do it this way. And I think that could be extended through WordCamps and shows like this. And, you know, I, I think it can get better over time. I'm glad yeah. the Tavern will often reformulate things for a wider audience that are on Make Core as well. Let, let's be clear, Russ. There are no other shows like this. <laughs>
<laughs> exactly. On that note, <laughs> thank you all for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching. If you uh, enjoyed this content, please click the share button. We'd really appreciate it. If you like this content on YouTube or on our website, hit the little thumbs up button. We'd appreciate that. And uh, thank you very much. You guys have a good rest of your day. It was a highly informative show today. Awesome. Right? Thanks, I know. Guys. Weird. We have to change our tagline now. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, but you had to go do that in the customizer. <laughs>